Hi everybody, my name is Patrick Martin and welcome to the Android Game Show. If you're tuning into this show, you're probably an Android game developer. You've invested in building an excellent game that players all over the world are already enjoying. You've found a fun gameplay loop, you've already integrated Google Play and Google Technologies into your game, and you may be looking to grow your audience or just keep them more engaged. So far, your Android game already runs on phones, tablets, and possibly even Chrome OS laptops. But wouldn't it be nice to follow your most dedicated players onto their gaming PCs? I don't know about you, but when I settle in for a long gameplay session, I walk over to my desktop computer. This is where I have my large monitor, personalized mouse and keyboard set up, and of course, my comfy gaming chair. Which is why we've created Google Play Games for PC. It's a brand new form factor for Android games, a first-class Google-supported environment that allows you to bring the Android game you've already built and shipped onto the PCs of Windows gamers. In the past, onboarding a totally new platform may have cost months of work. There's a new rendering stack to integrate, totally new system APIs and SDKs to swap out. You may need to find a new way to monetize your game. Of course, with the proliferation of cross-platform game engines, some of this work is already taken care of. But even if your game engine has a Build for PC button, most games will have platform-specific bits to update. There's still plenty of non-portable logic needed for any of the major platforms. And this is where Google Play Games on PC comes in. When building for this platform, you'll give PC players a new way to experience their favorite mobile games that actually feels native. Now I know what you're thinking. This sounds great, but will my game really just work out of the box? And the answer is yes and no. If you just recompile your game for the x86 architecture, it will usually run. But our goal is to create an environment where your Android game will look and feel like any other native PC game, from the game's performance to how it handles player input. If you think about the majority of Android games though, they're often designed with a mobile form factor in mind. And this means a few things. You will have to support the x86 processor architecture, preferably x86-64. Now, if you have a simpler game, mouse clicks are automatically turned into single tap events. But we found that most games, even these simple ones, can benefit from a bit more input work. So Play Games on PC provides access to the mouse and keyboard, allowing you to support everything from scroll events to keyboard presses. Keep in mind that Windows does not guarantee the presence of a touchscreen, meaning that it will be your responsibility to replace interactions like pinch to zoom with scroll wheel events. Remember that this is supposed to feel native, so you won't find touch overlays or fiddly multi-touch emulation here. There are also some unsupported APIs and features. Some are obvious, like you can't access the compass or telephony, but others may be work in progress or just not planned for the PC gaming environment check out this page, link in the description below for the most up-to-date information. You'll also want to make some UI changes in order to make your game feel native on the PC. For example, I mentioned that you'll need to support mouse and keyboard. This means that you'll likely want to add hints to the game UI, maybe even show a tutorial to tell users when to use keyboard shortcuts. We've also built a new input SDK that makes it easy for you to show users what keyboard and mouse controls are used in your game link in the description below. You'll also definitely want to ensure that you have high resolution assets and textures for your PC players. Unless you're evoking a retro aesthetic, the low poly models and low resolution textures that you can get away with on a six inch screen won't impress PC players with 32 inch monitors. But you'll have some additional horsepower on the PC, so you can usually afford to use a little bit more VRAM. Many developers will also want to tweak their UI layout a bit. Giant, touch-friendly buttons rendered on a 6-inch phone screen will give your game the look and feel of a 90s computer kiosk if they're just scaled with the screen size. PCs also tend to use the 16x9, 16x10, and 3x2 aspect ratios, so you need to make sure that your game's UI can handle those appropriately. While you're at it, Google Play PC games are expected to run at 60Hz at a minimum to maintain a premium feel we find that there's enough performance headroom coming from a phone to throw in the extra frames, and PC players won't have the same thermal or battery limits that a phone player will experience. Another key feature you'll need to implement is continuity between devices. 
This means that a player should be able to confidently bounce between a PC and a phone without thinking about it. Remember, this isn't just about adding PC players to your mobile game. You will also want to let your most dedicated players fire up their epic battle station when it's time for some serious business. To support you in this effort, we've redesigned Play Game Sign-On in version 2, link in the description below. Your players will now be signed into their Play Games account from the moment your game launches, just as you'd expect from any conventional console or the major PC game stores. Which means that you'll also completely cut out any churn you'd see from account creation or registration. Players will just automatically have a verified identity thanks to this new SDK. Once the player is signed in, you will have to keep their data up to date. Imagine spending all night grinding on some epic armor on your PC, then not having that progress the next time you pull out your phone. I can almost guarantee that you'll churn some players whenever that happens. Although we consider seamless continuity between devices to be a core requirement for play games on PC, we want to leave you in control of your data and how it's transferred. So if you're already storing player progress on your own servers, the easiest thing for you to do would be to add play game sign-in support to your mobile game and start automatically associating your in-game accounts with a player's play games ID. Then, whenever a player decides to try your game on a PC, their progress is automatically there without even a sign-in prompt. But if you don't already have some cloud backend, I'd suggest checking out Firestore, Play Save Games, or Open Saves. But just like games with existing backends, you have no obligation to use these. You could even opt to roll out something completely wacky, like writing saves to an IRC channel, if that's really what your heart truly desires. I may have done this once. And that's it for this brief overview of Google Play Games on PC. Today, this is an open beta in select countries. We're really excited to roll it out more broadly. If you want to join us in this journey, visit the overview page, link in the description below, and register your interest in becoming an Android on PC developer. And remember that in addition to building a stronger connection to your most dedicated players, changes you make to support the PC will improve your game's experience on Chrome OS and large screen Android tablets. If you have any questions, feel free to ask in the comments below. We're excited to see what you build. Bye, everybody. Bye.